Hi Jasper. Hello. <laughs> Hi buddy. Hi. Hi. It is a rainy, rainy day today. Do you want to go for a walk? Do you want to go for a walk? <laughs> All right, hey, let's go. Jasper. <laughs> He's like looking at himself. What the fuck is this? Jasper. <laughs> Sit. Hi. We're gonna, put, we're gonna put your hat on. There we go. Hi. Guys, check out how satisfying this looks. Like, oh, look at these beans. I mean, just look how perfectly they fit. Oh, what am I feeling today? Let's do a little Guatemala. A little chocolate caramel, mandarin, apricot, and almond. Sounds freaking delicious. Hi, buddy. Jasper, your little hair up top is wet. <laughs> Hi. The raincoat is literally just good for keeping his little back end a little bit dry, but his paws, like underside, gets pretty, pretty wet. Isn't that right, buddy? Hi. I know it's a rainy, rainy day today. Now, the real question is, are you really a millennial if you don't enjoy a nice pour over on a rainy day? I mean, Come on. So anyways, I've been on YouTube for six years now. Back in 2014, when I first started my channel, recording in my mom's basement, I was using my iPhone, was it the iPhone 5, I wanna say? Anyways, I used that for an entire year before upgrading to my first actual camera, which was just a simple point and shoot camera. It's the Canon G7X Mark II, which is very, very popular amongst all the vloggers on YouTube. And I actually use that for three years years, literally until the screen was falling apart and I had to use athletic tape to hold the like fold out screen together. It was a shit show, uh, but it worked. Until two years ago where I got a tiny little crop sensor mirrorless camera from Canon called the Canon N50, which is still what I use to this day. Today I'm gonna be sharing with you guys why I love this camera so much and why I haven't upgraded yet. Um, and sharing with you guys the rest of my minimalistic vlogging setup. Oh. Now, let me make this super clear. I am by no means saying that you need my current setup to be vlogging. I'll start by filming on your phone, do it for a year, and if you're still doing it after a year, then consider upgrading. Because let me tell you, most people don't last a year. Prove me wrong. So there are three main reasons why I love the Canon M50 so much. First one being, it is freaking tiny. Let me show you. So don't mind the massive microphone at the top, but just take a look at the actual camera itself. Like it is freaking tiny. This is my iPhone 8 Plus and um, it's, it's literally the size of my iPhone 8 Plus. And because this camera is so tiny, it also makes it very, very light, which is very important if you are vlogging, because as you can see, I have to extend my arm out and hold it in this position for sometimes like five to 10 minutes. And if you think that's not very hard, uh, fucking try it. And plus I just really found that the bigger my vlogging setup got, the less I really wanted to bring it to different places. For example, if I was going on a hike, do I really wanna bring a massive heavy setup with me to make the hike even more difficult? And especially for the type of content that I make, which is like very like lifestyle in the moment, very discreet. I don't wanna be bringing a massive setup to the gym, to a coffee shop, to a restaurant, whatever. So having a tiny little setup like this um, has been really beneficial for me. Now, the second reason why I like the M50 is because of the little flippy Audi screen. Now, I think the flippy Audi screen is essential to a vlogger, A, because I film all the shots of myself by myself. I need to know the framing, um, but also, 
so B, I use a manual focus lens and I use focus peaking, so I need to know if I'm actually in focus. I know that's a little bit controversial, but yes, I do use a manual focus lens, um, and I'll get to that in a little bit later. But the Canon M50 has a flippy outer screen that flips sideways, not up top like this. The problem with the ones that flip up top is that it blocks the microphone. So the flippy outer screen, Canon M50, Perfect. Here's a little behind the scenes. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see it, but I'm actually highlighted in red, which just means that I am in focus. Um, I can clearly see my framing, whether I'm in focus or not. Uh, this is just like a little box I got from Dollarama. Uh, and then, yeah, this is this is the setup. This is the behind the scenes look. There you are. So yeah, I personally believe the little flippy Audi screen is essential. However, I know there are people who are fine without it. I know there are people who use an external monitor so they can see it but same thing, like it just gets bigger and bigger. And then it's great for people who are doing like tech reviews, who just do like stand up, sit down shot. There's no way I can bring that set up, you know, wherever I go, et cetera. So I don't know, this just works really well for me. Third best thing about the Canon M50 is that it is hella cheap. You can get a brand new body for under $600. Like that is ridiculous. I mean, that might be the cheapest mirrorless camera with interchangeable lenses ever, um, but yeah, it is hella cheap, which just makes the barrier to entry a lot lower. Some other notable features of the Canon M50 would be the awesome dual pixel autofocus. When you do use an autofocus lens, like I mentioned, it's got focus peaking, it's got 4K cropped video. We of course have the infamous Canon color science, uh, plus it just takes absolutely unreal stills. Like all of my brand work, all of my commercial work have been taken with this camera. Now keep in mind that it was with a much more expensive lens. The Sigma 35 mil art lens, but still it takes great stills, great videos, and it's fucking cheap. Hi buddy. <laughs> I know I'll play with you in a little bit, okay? <laughs> All right, so now that we've talked about the camera itself, let's talk about the rest of this setup. Now for the microphone, I use the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. Now I got this microphone and there was a point in time where I didn't use it just because the microphone is so freaking big. Um, however, it is a noticeable difference in sound quality. So I just had to suck it up. Um, let me give you guys a quick little test. So this is what it sounds like with the microphone. And this is what it sounds like with the onboard mic on the Canon M50. Now there have been tons and tons of vlogs where I just filmed like this. And honestly, when I start and finish the entire vlog with the onboard camera, you really can't, I mean, People aren't gonna say like, oh, the audio quality is so, so shit. But when you go from the actual microphone to the onboard microphone, you are gonna notice a huge difference. Now, for those of you guys who are contemplating between the Rode VideoMic Pro and the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, I would definitely go for the Pro Plus, which is the one that I have because it's got automatic record and stop. Because for the original Pro, you have to turn the camera on and also turn the microphone on separately. So I know there have been tons of time for other people where they just didn't get audio because they forgot to turn the microphone on and that definitely does happen a lot. So purely for that uh, feature itself, I think it's worth it. Plus the battery life on the Pro Plus is absolutely unreal. The last time I charged this microphone was before I moved to Vancouver. So it would have to be like middle of January. It is currently, what is it? Mid April? Yeah, I haven't charged it in like three to four months. So it's absolutely unreal. Um, plus when you do see like the red blinking light, meaning that it's low battery, you still have 10 hours of recording time. But yeah, like I mentioned, when I need to be very discreet, I'll just take the entire microphone off or just record on my phone. But yeah, the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus is an absolute unreal microphone. Now for my tripod, I use the Manfrotto little like tiny pixie tripod. I previously did use the Joby Gorillapod because that's literally what everybody used. That's what Casey used, but I just found it to be too fucking cumbersome. Like it's just massive. Massive and you know, they're like, oh yeah, you can tie it on a tree branch and tie it on a pole. But I literally did that maybe once and it, yeah, it wasn't great. Plus whenever you take that thing out into the public, it just looks like fucking a three pronged massive anal bead. Anyways, you cannot be discreet with that thing. It is massive. Um, and that's not a problem if you don't care about that. Personally, I do. Um, but yeah, I just like this little Manfrotto pixie pot. You just press the thing, it swivels, and it's freaking tiny, made out of metal. And honestly, this little thing has lasted me since my G7X days, so would highly recommend as well. All right, and finally, let's talk about the controversial manual focus lens that I use for vlogging, which is the Rokinon 12mm f2. Now, before I got this lens, I used the Canon EFM 11 to 22mm, and that is an absolutely 
Unreal Lens for this camera. But the only problem with that is that it's only an F4, so it's not the best in low light conditions. Plus, it doesn't give you that separation from the background. Let me actually go grab it so you can see the difference. So now you guys are seeing the Canon EFM 11 to 22 mil. As you guys can see, Unreal Lens, however, you just don't get that same amount of separation from the background. Plus I had to increase the ISO much higher because this is at an F4, whereas the other one is an F2. Um, but yeah, this is an Unreal Lens. If you want to pick up this camera and you want to start off with a nice vlogging lens, I would definitely recommend this, but it just wasn't bright enough. It wasn't fast enough. And as you guys can see, there's a lot more separation between myself and the background. So that is one of the main reasons I like this lens. It's nice and wide and it's nice and fast. I know recently Sigma came out with the 16 millimeter F1.4 for the Canon M mount lenses, um, which is a really popular series for the Sony mirrorless cameras. However, I just don't think 16 millimeters on a crop sensor camera, especially the Canon with a 1.6 times crop is wide enough for vlogging. I just find that it's a little bit too close up for my liking. So that's why I stuck with the 12 mil manual focus. Plus I think the manual focus lens is a lot quicker when you get really comfortable with it. You just have specific markings where you know that the arm length shot and the medium length shot, the talking head shot. And once you get comfortable, you know, going back and forth between the distances, uh, then I think you have a really good versatile setup. Um, so that's the lens I use. I probably wouldn't recommend it for beginners. If you guys are considering this setup, um, definitely pick up the 11 to 22. But like I mentioned, if you are just starting off, you don't need the setup. Start on your phone, okay? Start on your phone. Oh, and actually one more thing. If you guys ever find that sometimes in my videos, there's a little bit of like weird light distortion or like fragmenting that's going on. I got this like shitty cheap little ND filter from Amazon. Um, and I've been using it for years and it's been all right, but I think recently I've been having some issues with it. Um, as you guys can see, like it is a lot sharper without the ND filter, but because it is an F2 for most of the times I do need a variable MD. So I'll probably pick up a more expensive one. So if you guys have any recommendations, let me know. Oh yeah, that definitely looks a lot better without that variable ND. So yeah, if you guys have a good one, let me know. I think at the end of the day, it comes down to the type of content you are creating. You know, are there cameras with far better specs? One thousand percent. But as the content creator, you have to know your audience and the type of content you are creating. You know, Just Joe Lee as a business, as an entity, as a personal brand is a reflection of myself. Jolie and you know, I'm not this like picture perfect, this super polished, this very politically correct kind of guy. You know, I'm gonna make the occasional dog eating jokes or the poop jokes and that's just who I am. Um, so I think having like, you know, shaky footage, footage that's a little bit out of focus, rough transitions and just keeping it very raw and authentic is a part of that Just Jolie brand. And I think how you convey that as a content creator really portrays what your brand is and who your target demographic is. So, you know, in theory, could I have every shot be perfect with nice, even diffused lighting, um, perfect audio? Yes, but that is not the Just Jolie brand. The Just Jolie brand is very rough, very like in your face kind of, I don't know how to describe it. It's just, it's just me. It's just Joe Lee. And I think that's the best way to describe it. What are we going to do today? It's raining outside. I mean, we can play. You want to, you want to play some fetch? Hold on. <laughs> Go get it. Oh, oh shit. Oh, <laughs> oh no. This is what happens when you have dirty dishes and you don't want the camera to see it. So you just put it on the ground. Anyway. <laughs>